Charlie Watts passed away this week. As drummer of the Rolling Stones, he inspired generations of drummers from young teenagers to world-class professionals like Keith Moon and Ringo Starr. My son Ben is one of those young drummers who is a huge Charlie Watts fan. We've been jamming on Stones tunes together in our basement since he was about 10. We were enjoying a late morning coffee at the cottage on Tuesday, where I tend to disconnect from technology, when Ben suddenly glanced up from his phone, looking a little pale, and blurted out, Oh, no. Dad, Charlie Watts died. We sat in silence for a few moments, just staring out at the lake, and then I walked over to the stereo and put on Beggar's Banquet. It's been nothing but Rolling Stones records for a couple of days now. I recently wrote a piece about Charlie, in celebration of his 80th birthday, back in June. It seems appropriate to revisit that column. I'm re-reading Mike Edison's thoughtful bio, commentary sympathy for the drummer this week, as well. I highly recommend it. Charlie Watts was one of the all-time greats. From the Vault, June 4, 2021. Charlie Watts celebrated his 80th birthday this week. In his teens he was an aspiring jazz drummer, obsessed with big band drummers like Sid Caplett, Dave Tuff and Gene Krupa and later his attention shifted to Max Roach, Kenny Clark, Roy Haynes, Elvin Jones, and then Tony Williams. Watts was also inspired by Joe Morello's playing with Dave Brubeck. Watts joined the Rolling Stones in 1963 but stayed true to his jazz roots by infusing his playing in the blues rock band with a subtlety and sensibility that elevated the music. He avoided drum solos and served the songs. His modest approach has continued for nearly 60 years of playing with the Rolling Stones. Advertisement In celebration of this rhythmic octogenarian, let's explore a playlist of Charlie Watts highlights with the Rolling Stones. Around and Around is a Chuck Berry cover from the Stones' 1964 album, 12 Times 5. Recorded at Chess Records in Chicago, Charlie slips in and out of stop time, driving the band throughout. Under My Thumb is a song that brought controversy to the Stones because of its misogynist lyrics referring to a woman as a squirming dog and a pet. Aside from the lyric content, most writers focus on the unusual tone of Brian Jones' marimba playing but Charlie's drumming on this track is often overlooked. He perfectly serves the song here, punctuating Jagger's vocal lines with subtle tom fills. Sympathy for the Devil was even more controversial than Under My Thumb because Jagger was singing in the first person as Satan. He details various atrocities in history, claiming responsibility for things like the crucifixion of Jesus, the slaughter of the Romanov family, the German blitzkrieg attacks in World War II, the assassination of JFK and Robert Kennedy, and various other tragic events. Throughout the dark narrative Charlie Watts provides a hypnotic samba groove. In one interview, Watts recalled the recording in this way, we had a go at loads of different ways of playing it, in the end I just played a jazz Latin feel in the style that Kenny Clark would have played on, A Night in Tunisia, not the actual rhythm he played, but the same styling. Factory Girl is a bit of a percussion anomaly in the Stones catalogue. On this track from Beggar's Banquet, Charlie plays tabla with drumsticks. These Indian hand drums would not traditionally be played with sticks and Watts took some flack for the faux pas, but claimed he liked the sound. Gimme Shelter is an unsettled, violent song about social unrest and Charlie plays with conviction on this track, underscoring the tension let loose by guest vocalist Mary Clayton singing, Rape, Murder, It's Just a Shot Away.
Midnight Rambler is a dark song from the Let It Bleed record, loosely based on the life of Albert de Salvo, the Boston Strangler. It's a rhythmic rollercoaster as the time feel shifts from swing to rock and back, and the tempo changes multiple times throughout the song. Can't You Hear Me Knocking is a seven-minute romp from Sticky Fingers, 1971, that finds what slipping in some tasty snare drags on the groove of the song proper, first three o'clock, and then a four-minute improvisation stretches out with a more laid-back groove and saxophonist Bobby Keys doing his thing. Tumbling Dice is a bluesy boogie woogie groove from Exile on Main Street, with substantial contributions from pianist Ian Stewart, and soulful backing vocals echoing Jagger. Loving Cup has a neat rhythmic moment in the chorus where Charlie plays a bar of five quarters time, then four quarters, then back to five quarters but without sounding awkward or out of place. The rest of the song rides a lazy groove throughout and the insertion of these two bars of five quarters time does not interrupt the groove. It actually enhances it. Advertisement Scarlet was an outtake that was recently released on the 2020 deluxe reissue of Goat's Head Soup. The track is a raw blues reggae hybrid that features Jimmy Page, with stellar drumming by Charlie Watts. Ain't Too Proud to Beg is a cover of a Temptations song that Charlie Watts absolutely owns, in a subtle way. The video features Jagger and Watts in matching pink satin jackets with lime green lapels. It's 1974 fashion, for sure. Beast of Burden is a high watermark for Keith Richards and Ronnie Wood playing the tangled and intertwined guitar lines in perfect musical symbiosis. Behind this mellifluous guitar duet Charlie Watts lays down a perfect, simple yet supportive beat that exactly serves the song. Miss You finds Charlie embracing the disco movement in 1978. He describes the song as, heavily influenced by going to the discos. You can hear it in a lot of those four to the floor and the Philadelphia-style drumming. Emotional Rescue is another disco-influenced number with Watts lighting up the beat with off-beat shots behind Jagger's full set to lead vocal, love it or hate it. Discuss. Waiting on a Friend was conceived in Jamaica and the lazy, dreamy feel of the song is augmented with percussion by Michael Carabello playing claves, cabasa, guiro and congas. Suck on the Jugular is a deep track from Voodoo Lounge, 1994. Charlie Watts is deeply funky on this track, along with some swanky wah guitar and a thick bass groove. Advertisement Commit a Crime finds the Stones returning to their roots with an album of Chicago blues covers. On this Howlin' Wolf track, Watts lays down a greasy blues shuffle that sounds straight out of Chicago. Living in a Ghost Town was released in April 2020 and references the COVID-19 pandemic in the lyrics. Charlie Watts plays a slick reggae groove while Jagger bemoans, life was so beautiful, then we all got locked down. Feel like a ghost. Revisiting his love of jazz, Satisfaction is an intriguing track from a lesser-known record, Charlie Watts meets the Danish radio big band. It's a Latin groove arrangement of the Stones' iconic hit, recorded in Copenhagen in 2010. I'm currently reading a biography, commentary book on Charlie Watts entitled Sympathy for the Drummer by Mike Edison. 
Allow me to share a quote that neatly sums up Charlie Watts' contributions to the Rolling Stones. For now, let's just be happy that the Rolling Stones were smart enough to hire a jazz cat who would always put the role in front of the rock, a guy who didn't measure his worth by how many notes he played, whose ego was tempered by the primacy of his job, to put the song over, to make the band sound great. He knew when to swing, he knew when to stomp. Charlie didn't play drum solos, not because he wasn't good enough to play them, but because he was good enough not to have to.